Uh, thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. And uh, I, I rise to speak as someone who signed uh, uh, support for the proposal for this bill. But having heard the evidence has come to uh, a disappointing conclusion. Disappointing for me, as it will be disappointing for others. But let's start about the fundamental thesis behind all this uh, and, and a matter on which we will undoubtedly agree. There's EU research that says that a human car collision at 20 miles an hour has a 10% probability of fatality. At 30 miles an hour, it rises to 40% probability. And when you get to 50 miles an hour, it is 100% probability. And you can draw the line. So increasing speed in a collision causes deaths. And actually, these figures are for an adult being hit by a vehicle. A child being hit by a vehicle, I don't have equivalent numbers for. But I don't think we should doubt for a single second that the effects will be substantially more severe. So I think we will have a shared view, and I'm sure Mike Rumbles will agree with this, that speed kills. So the question is not so much as to whether there is a problem waiting to be solved and which we should turn our attention to. Uh, the question is really just much more uh, about how we should do it. Oh, I'll give some other numbers, by the way. A 1% increase in speed it results in a 4% increase in fatal accidents. That's from other research. So the relationship between speed and the outcome from accidents uh, is clear, unambiguous, and I think the, the, the work of the committee absolutely recognise that. Um, we've got to be careful about what the bill does. I, I, I think there's a danger of our misleading ourselves about what the bill does, because I haven't, I confess, looked at the detail of what the Welsh are proposing to do. I heard uh, the member in charge, whose every effort on this I utterly commend, without reservation, I have to say, um, that, that, that they are changing the national speed limit. But of course, this bill doesn't do that. Um, what it does do is address simply restricted roads. And I must say, I'd never really heard of restricted roads, what they were, it was not a distinction, despite having been transport minister previously, uh, of which I was aware. Mike Rumbles uh, referred to it uh, essentially being uh, a road that is not an A road or a B road and has uh, uh, lampposts no more than 185 metres apart. That's a restricted road. And of course, that properly covers most of the roads in most of our towns and villages where pedestrians and young pedestrians in particular are likely to be found. But of course, yes, I will. John Finney. Thank you. I'm very grateful to the member taking a brief intervention on this point. Would you say it's therefore, given that the description is given, it's astonishing that people say they don't know the length of the, the total length of these roads? including the Cabinet Secretary. Um, Stuart Stevenson. Um, well, I, if I can just find the... Oh, here we are. At paragraph uh, 140 in uh, the committee's report, it said that 21% of local authorities have identified the roads they'd wish to sit to twenty, and those in which they would wish to retain 30. 29% they have the asset data to allow roads to be uh, identify. There's certainly a lot of ignorance out there about the state of our roads. And I absolutely accept that that is a driver to do something about that. Absolutely and unambiguously accept. Um, it is disappointing that the percentages are as low as we report uh, at paragraph uh, 140 in the, 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 the committee's report, because ignorance is not a good basis for policy making and action on the ground. I congratulate uh, urban areas uh, in particular like Edinburgh who've uh, invested the time, the effort and made the difference. It is worth of course reminding ourselves about the evidence we got um, that the introduction of a 20 mile uh, zone where previously it was 30 only appears to uh, give us about a one mile an hour reduction in average speed. But averages are not the whole story, of course. The real problem, uh, I have to say, is the problem of what those who are breaking the law are doing in a 20 compared to a 30. I don't think we got evidence that answered that question, but I think we probably instinctively, and I instinctively believe, that someone who's going to break the law will break the law anyway. 
So the question of enforcement is one which we, we shouldn't put uh, simply to one side. I will, yes. If the member Jamie Green. I, I'm, I'm listening with careful interest to my colleague on the committee, but, uh, and for my benefit, uh, you started off saying you were a proposer and a proponent of the concept of the bill. For me, I'd be really interested in, in learning from your point of view, what was the primary thing that made you change your mind to the position that you resulted in? Because I think that would be quite helpful. Stuart Stevenson. Well, I was just about to come to that because it's a perfectly proper question that I should be asked given my starting point in the debate and, and my ending point. And it is worth saying my political colleagues who speak from these benches will give different views on the subject, which I think is in the interest of balance. No, ultimately, I, th I think I came to the conclusion, driven by the evidence, this wasn't the most straightforward way of achieving the objectives that the bill set out for itself. Um, it might be easier to do it simply by changing the speed limit, because there are many villages, first of all, let's say, who have streets which actually don't have street lighting. So actually, strictly speaking, are not caught by the, 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 the restricted road. Mr. Chapman and myself could probably identify one or two. Members yes. in his last minute. Uh, the members in his last All comment. right. Sorry, presiding officer. Um, I did want to be helpful. Uh, but, uh, and equally, there are many towns and villages where there is an A or B road goes through, and it would be appropriate to consider that for a 20. So I think that uh, this is a worthy, worthy attempt uh, to address this particular issue. But it falls short in terms of its capability of implementation and its cost of implementation. Um, I went through a little village close to me and I counted you would need 80 signs in that village. So I think we've got to not take the pressure off government and the minister to find a way. I just am not persuaded by the evidence that this is the way. And I do so with very grave disappointment because I support the objectives the member sought.